This is a presentation on techniques for negotiating complex contracts. The question underlying this presentation is, how can we help large groups of individuals rapidly negotiate optimal agreements or near optimal agreements concerning complex problems which have many interrelated issues? In this presentation, we will discuss first weaknesses with current negotiation techniques when applied to complex contracts and Nonlinear negotiating techniques can help ad uh, address these limitations. The state of the art in negotiation protocols has been to address almost exclusively simple contracts, by which we mean contracts which either include just a single issue, for example price, or several independent issues, each relating to the price of a separate item. For example, I want the bike for as cheap as possible, I also want the book for as cheap as possible, and so on. Standard techniques such as proposal exchange work fine for simple contracts. In um, proposal exchange, each individual who's negotiating starts from what represents the optimal agreement from their perspective and then they concede um, in their uh, proposals usually as slowly as possible to meet somewhere in the middle. And if we have simple contracts, we find that each of the proposals and the final agreement trace what is called the Pareto optimal line, which means that the contracts are um, optimal. There are no other contracts which are better for both parties. But complex contracts are different. Complex contracts include dependencies, which means that the choice that I made for one issue in the contract impacts the value of a choice that I made for some other issue. Let's say I have a contract which has two issues, one concerning the stereo receiver I buy and the other concerning the speakers I will buy. The value of any given stereo receiver will depend on which speakers I buy with it because they are in some way dependent. If we apply standard techniques like proposal exchange to complex contracts, <clears throat> we find that the um, proposals that are made by the two parties as they can see towards each other, tend to not trace the Pareto optimal line, which means that the parties end up with contracts which are worse from both of their perspectives than other contracts that do exist. So what is going on? If we look at it more closely, we find that simple contracts have what we can call linear utilities. In other words, the utility functions which give the utility for a contract uh, for each agent tend to be planar. The uh, utility, it, um, <clears throat> this is because the utility um, functions are calculated just usually as a simple weighted sum of the utilities for each individual issue in the agreement. And when we have these uh, linear utility functions, then conceding slowly as possible towards the middle produces optimal outcomes. On the other hand, if we go to complex contracts with dependencies, then we find that the uh, utility functions are bumpy. They have the multiple optimum. That's because the utility functions are complex and not just additive function of the selections for each issue. So uh, imagine we apply a proposal exchange process to uh, this kind of uh, utility function. We have one agent here, agent one, starting at its optimum and conceding as slowly as possible and we have the other agent starting from its optimum and conceding as slowly as possible and they're both conceding towards each other. And we find if they continue that process they will end up with a contract which is relatively poor for both of them. And in fact if they would have gone somewhere else, not started from their optimum and not conceded towards each other, they could have come up with a contract which is actually um, much better for both. So conceding towards the middle can easily result in lose-lose outcomes if we have a complex contract. So what can we do about that? One of the first protocols we have investigated for this purpose is what we call the mediated single text protocol with annealing agents. It's a multi-round protocol where a mediator proposes in each round a variant of the contract but both or all the agents accepted in previous rounds. And this actually was uh, first designed for the Camp David negotiations. Now in order to make this work with um, <clears throat> nonlinear utility functions, we introduce a trick, and that is that agents have a willingness to accept contracts, contract variants, which actually uh, create some kind of utility loss for them. And they'd be doing this stochastically with a probability that is relatively high at first, but then decreases over time. 
This approach is inspired by the simulated annealing uh, technique for nonlinear optimization. And we find if we uh, simulate agents which uh, use this kind of approach that the uh, proposals accepted by the agents wander all over the map. Sometimes they're worse for one, sometimes for the other, but they almost always end up very close to the Pareto optimal line. This is because since the agents are willing to accept temporary losses that allows them to skip past local minima and they're able to eventually converge on win-win solutions. There is, however, a catch. Annealing is not an individually rational strategy for an agent to take. Imagine that we have um, set up four experiments where we have two agents negotiating with each other. In some cases the agents choose to be simulated annealers which means that they make some concessions earlier on at least in the negotiation and in some of the cases the agents are what we can call hill climbers which means that they will only accept proposals if they are better than the ones that they were given before. Now if we make all the different combinations of agents, in this case it will be four, we'll find that when, as we noticed before, if you have two simulated annealing agents, they will do well individually and produce uh, very close to Pareto optimal outcomes, or achieving 98% of Pareto optimal. And if they're both hill climbers, then they'll achieve relatively poor outcomes, only about 73% of optimal for each of them individually. Now let's say, however, that one agent is a hill climber and the other is a simulated annealer. If we trace out what happens, we find that the agent, which is the simulated annealer, does much more poorly than the agent which is the hill climber. And so if an agent does not know what the other agent is going to do, that is whether the other agent is an annealer or a hill climber, then it is individually rational for it to, uh, to be a hill climber itself. So to avoid getting uh, the poor payoff that comes from being a conceder with, paired with a non-conceder. But of course, if both agents use that reasoning, then both agents will choose hill climbing, which means they'll end up with getting poor outcomes for both of them. This is what is known as, in game theory, as a prisoner's dilemma payoff. We develop what we call a parity-preserving annealing mediator protocol to resolve this prisoner's dilemma. The key trick is that the mediator instead of the agents stochastically pursues rejected proposals with a time decreasing probability. This means that if one or sometimes even both agents say no to a contract, the mediator will still follow up on it with a variant. This allows it to get past local minima and find the win-win um, agreements. And the incentive dilemmas don't occur because agents don't have to risk making concessions themselves. This is not the end of the story. The annealing mediator protocol has weaknesses. It requires lots of steps to find win-win outcomes and therefore requires the agents to reveal a lot of information about their utility functions. Mediator bias in terms of whether it chooses to ignore more no votes from one agent or another can be hard to detect and requires trial and error to select the annealing regime. In other words, to select what is the right number of no votes to ignore and on what schedule over time. This means that it is important to figure out how to design better protocols for negotiation complex contracts, ones that produce optimal outcomes, minimize the amount of utility information that the agents must reveal, and one that scales to very complex and large-scale problems with uh, hundreds of issues and agents as well as higher order dependencies between the issues. The lessons learned from work to date include that complex contract negotiation requires radically different and sometimes not intuitive techniques. For example, we, as we saw, in complex negotiation it can make sense to concede early and often rather than little and late, as it does with simple contracts. Future progress, in addition, will require innovative integration of nonlinear optimization and game theory work. If you'd like to hear more information about this work, you can contact Mark Klein at the MIT Center for Collective Intelligence.